Good day, everyone. In our previous two lectures, we had talked about the importance of interactions, and we had started by looking at the interaction of walk and run. How do we create it in Unity using for a VR experience? Our next step to understanding interactions is doing a timed interaction. So basically, we have a gaze timer, which means that whenever we look at an object for a particular instant of time, it starts a timer and it, it, it triggers an action. So today, what we are going to learn or look at is basically how to create this timer first, so that if you are looking at a particular object and if you want to teleport to that object, the timer begins. And as soon as the timer ends, that teleportation thing happens. So instead of anything happening instantly, you have a timer which keeps a track of the time and then it triggers an interaction. So let's see in Unity, how do we create such kind of timer? So let's begin with. First, we create a normal project in Unity. And as you can see over here, I have created a project in Unity and I have copy pasted the Google VR folder in Unity. So let's do our most basic steps first. First is we create a ground. So we go to create 3D object and plane. I will start a lighting so that it shows the lighting effects. And I will name this plane as ground. I will reset this plane so that that plane is at the origin. And I will increase the size of the plane by 20 times so that it looks like an infinite long infinitely long tail. Next, what I do is I create a 3D object called less cube and I again reset it to the origin. I create a very thin cube so that I, uh, the thickness of the cube instead of 1, I keep as 0.1, so 10% of what the thickness is. Right now, if you see, everything looks white. So what I want to do is I want to give it a color. So what I've done is I have created two materials called as ground and trigger. trigger. The first is the ground material, which I'm copy pasting over here. So you can see that the material is applied. And then I take this trigger material and apply it to this trigger. I'll move this trigger closer to the ground. Next, as we do for any VR experience, is we create the head and the eyes. So let's do that. First is create empty and then reset it to the origin and name it as camera rig, which is basically our head. We next make the main camera as the child of camera rig, denoting the main camera to be the eyes. And again, we set it at the origin. We move the camera rig a bit up so that it's simulating how our eyes look from. Now let's add the VR elements. The first element that we add is the emulator. So GVR editor emulator. Next is we add the event system. So we will be using the Google VR event system, not any other Unity event system. So that is an important thing to keep in mind. Another thing, as I said, is we created the head, we created the eyes. Now we will create the reticle. So we will add the rectangle pointer to the eyes. So as you can see over here, the head is created, the eyes and the reticle. Now to make sure that the eyes are emitting the light, we'll add the physics raycaster component to the entire part. We'll add the physics raycaster to the eyes. So this is the basic. So let's look at it, whether it actually shows at this, as it does in any VR experience. I do the play part, yes, it is doing it. Now, what I want to do is, as long as I gaze to this trigger, I want to start that timer and show it to completion. So the basic steps first is to create that timer. And for that, what I want to do is, I have used a pointer or any PNG which can show the timer and I have downloaded it from the internet. So let me just add it. This is a pointer PNG that is downloaded from the internet. You can use any pointer PNG. So that is okay. Now, these are a couple of important steps. Once you add the pointer PNG to your project, what I want to do you to do is next is in the texture type, change from default to sprite 2D UI. 
So basically, a sprite is a UI element. And since our timer is also a UI element, we will be using the same for our entire VR experience. So I have to apply. Now, I want to create this UI element. So when I go to create, I go to UI, and I go to image. So over here, as you can see, the option of sprite, I add the pointer to the sprite. Another important thing to keep in mind is you're using the image type from simple, you're going to use the filled image. So let me just reset its position. So if you see over here, do you see this timer? So this is a precise timer that we need to control when we are looking at an object. So this is what you have to do. Now, if you go in Canvas, what you need to remove is this graphics ray caster because we are using the Google VR ray caster, not the graphics ray caster over here. So I will remove the component over here. And what I will do is in the Canvas mode, I will say instead of the screen space overlay, put the screen space camera, which means that I'm using a camera view angle. Now, this is what the entire image is. Now, what I want to do is, now I want to initiate my gaze when I look at this object. That means when I, my head is looking at this object, it should initiate this timer. And for my head, this is the camera rig. So what I'll do is I'll create a script with the functions gaze on and gaze off. So that whenever I look or I, whenever I look at this object, my timer starts. So let me do that. So for that, first I create a new script called as gaze. VR gaze, let's say. So for this VR gaze, first of all, what we are doing is the manipulation of the UI. So for that, we need to add a specific set of libraries. So as you can see over here at the top, you will see using Unity Engine. So another set of libraries you need to add is the Unity Engine and UI libraries. We're using Unity Engine, not UI. So this gives access to the UI libraries since we'll be manipulating the UI over here. So now let's let's start by creating this. So first, we need to tell the gaze which is the pointer or what is the pointer image that I have to use. So we create public image. So this is a pointer image that we're going to use. So we use another variable called as total time. So basically, this is the total time for which the pointer will move. And this is set as two. So for now, we are setting it as two seconds. And you can change this pointer time. Next, what we create is a, is a Boolean variable so as to say whether the pointer is entered or, or not. So we create a Boolean variable called as GVR status. Then we create a, a, a timer variable. So this is the overall timer variable. So again, all these use you will understand as we create our code. So we have created this timer variable. Okay, now the first thing is first, we need to create two functions, which these functions denote whenever we enter the object to start the timer and whenever we leave the object to reset the timer. So let's create these two functions. And once the uh, status of, uh, once the once uh, the uh, function is true, we want the GVR status, which is a Boolean variable, to turn to true. And we are creating a public function as GVR off. For which we are creating the What we are doing is we are saying that the, the Boolean variable is false and we are resetting the timer to zero and we are resetting the image gauge fill amount to zero. That means the entire timer and the fill gauge goes to zero back. Now, if you look at this function, if this function is true, what to do? So let's look at right that. So if GVR status is true, then what you need to do is first start the timer, GVR timer plus equal to time 
constant time. What it does is it starts the timer and increase, it increases the timer by a small delta time, which is an inbuilt function. And as the, if a timer increases, You want the you want the uh, the circle to fill, or you want the timer to fill. So that's what I'm writing over here. I'm writing it so that it uh, it uh, says that okay, it fills the timer. So as these two statements see that the timer, the GVR timer keeps on incrementing its value from zero to one. So maximum when GVR timer becomes equal to total time. The value becomes one, which means that the fill amount is totally completed. So this is what precisely this function does. So this is where we have written the script for initiating the trigger. So let's go back to our Unity. Now we have added this to the camera array. So as you can see over here, it is first asking about the image. So let's denote its image. Okay. So now it's showing its image over here. And next thing what you need to do is assign the cube the event system. So let's start with queuing, creating an event trigger. So what we do to create is a, 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 a mouse enter and a mouse exit. So pointer enter and a pointer exit. So let's add the camera rig over here. Let's add the camera rig over here. And in the function, let's create the GVR on when the pointer enters, and let's create a GVR off when the pointer exits. Okay. So this is what it is. Let's see what has happened exactly. So as to see whether do we need to do anything else or so. Oh, so in order to avoid seeing the initial, what I do is I put the image and I full put the fulfill amount as zero. Because what will happen is that the image is initially there and it's full. So it will already be full. So that's the reason. So now you can see the timer. That's wonderful. So again, let me show you on the maximized. So I'm moving to this pointer. Great. Now I can see the entire pointer going from 0 to 1. So it's filling up the entire screen. So this is the first part of the trigger and timer part that you see in this tutorial. In the next part of it, you will see how to trigger an action, which is in case whether it's a teleport or a scene transition using the same timer. Thank you very much.